In this video, I'm going to talk about radiation therapy. What is it? Who needs it? How it's given and what to expect when you're getting radiation therapy, and some of the typical side effects. Radiation therapy is a form of energy given to areas that have been or may be affected by breast cancer. The most common use for radiation therapy is after surgery for breast cancer in women who have had breast preservation surgery, also called a lumpectomy. The reason we give radiation therapy in that setting is to treat any cells elsewhere in the breast that we just can't see. It's highly effective in reducing the risk of cancer coming back, not just in the breast, but in the regional or area lymph nodes. In people who have had lymph node involvement, we use a bigger field, and I'll explain that in just a second. So normally, when we treat just the breast, the breast itself receives the energy. If somebody has a higher risk tumor, meaning a higher risk of the cancer coming back, in the area around the breast, the lymph nodes, we will extend the radiation field. The term field just refers to the area that's radiated. So depending on your tumor characteristics, that will determine how much of your body is radiated. We have found that more radiation therapy is important in people who have a large tumor, positive lymph nodes, and in other situations like inflammatory breast cancer, which I'll get to in just a moment. So the way radiation therapy is given, as I mentioned, it's external to the body. The first thing that happens, of course, is that you need to see a radiation oncologist. You can see a radiation oncologist at any point while you're making decisions about your initial treatment for breast cancer. Women who have a lumpectomy the part and parcel of that, in general, is getting radiation therapy. However, if you have a mastectomy, there are also people who need radiation after mastectomy. So a lot of people say to me, I don't want to have a lumpectomy because I don't want radiation therapy. So what I just told you is some women with a mastectomy also get radiation therapy. I'll give you a couple examples. If the tumor is five centimeters or more, that's two inches, we will recommend radiation therapy after a mastectomy. If you have positive lymph nodes, if the skin was involved, if the tumor was fixed to the chest wall, meaning that it was sort of anchored to the back of your chest and wasn't movable, and then an inflammatory breast cancer. So just because you have a mastectomy does not mean radiation therapy will be omitted. So this is why it's important to consider seeing a radiation oncologist even before you make your surgical decision. Is this required? Absolutely not, but it's something you can ask for because you'll make a fully informed decision about what to expect, for example, after a lumpectomy. So now I'll talk about how radiation planning is done and how it affects your daily life. The first thing that happens after you see the radiation oncologist and you and they agree that this is the right thing for your treatment is you undergo something called simulation. This is a term that just means planning. And this is done on a CAT scan machine. And because there are a lot of x-rays used to do the planning, you'll find that the technicians, the physicists, and the radiation oncologist will be in another room. Now your risk of exposure to radiation therapy in this planning session is low, but think about the people who do this every day. So the reason they're behind a glass wall is because they see hundreds or thousands of patients a year. So it can be quite hard to be away from the team. They'll talk with you over a microphone, so you'll have that human contact, and then they'll come in and out of the room. The simulation or planning involves your lying on the radiation table with your arm up in a cradle, and you may be there for as long as two hours. This is important time. What we're doing is avoiding radiating normal tissues, the heart, the lung, tissues that don't need to be radiated, so it's worth the time. 
Is every treatment two hours? Not at all. Most treatments involve after the planning that you come in, you change into a gown, you get treated, it takes as long as an x-ray, you go home, you can drive yourself to and from appointments. Radiation oncologists tend to run on time. They can usually work around your schedule, see you first thing in the morning or at the end of the day, so it doesn't interfere with work. This is different from chemotherapy, which we'll cover in another video, where we do ask people to drive you. So radiation is quite different. If you receive radiation therapy for advanced cancer, the treatment course is shorter and the planning tends to be shorter. So treating the breast and regional lymph nodes will take anywhere from three to six weeks. Now, it's short treatment, but it's a daily treatment, Monday through Friday, not on the weekends. If you are treated for a lesion in the bone or the lung or another part of your body, that tends to be a much shorter course of treatment. These differences are important to know. So who doesn't get radiation therapy? There are some exceptions. People who have ductal carcinoma in situ, also called non-invasive breast cancer, or stage zero, we've covered this in another video. Many of those patients, if they have a wide margin, if the tumor is small, if people are older, and if their tumor is positive for the estrogen receptor and they're willing to take hormonal therapy, also covered in another video, then they could consider omitting or skipping radiation therapy. The key thing to know is if the cancer were to recur, you can have surgery again and now have radiation therapy. This would be an option to talk about with your team. We are highly uh, uh, selective in who we decide can omit radiation therapy, and a lot of people don't want to, but a lot of people welcome the chance to not have to have it if their prognosis is good. There are a few other people who should not receive radiation therapy because of other medical problems. One would be is if you already had radiation therapy to the breast because you had breast cancer on that side or because you had radiation for another reason. For example, if you had a tumor in the chest near the breast that was radiated, like Hodgkin lymphoma, and you receive radiation to that area, we do try to avoid repeat radiation. There are a couple exceptions. If it was a long time ago, and if the field, the area radiated, did not really overlap with the breast, you might be able to have radiation again. Our Yerba report will be able to help you with this, but again, this is a personal decision because your radiation oncologist needs your previous radiation records, which may or may not be in the records available to Yerba if it was a long time ago. The other people who should not have radiation therapy are people with active lupus and active scleroderma. Those patients tend to have a risk of something called skin necrosis. You don't even need to know what that is, it sounds bad. It's death of the tissue from radiation because of really an underlying vascular or autoimmune disease. This is really not the case with other autoimmune diseases, but this is something that you would want to meet with the radiation oncologist about before you had a lumpectomy because you want to know, is radiation therapy an option for you? Even if you have these conditions, it doesn't mean it's not. It just means you need to make an informed decision about the risks and benefits. Side effects of radiation therapy are generally pretty predictable. Because you're getting energy to the area of the skin, most people describe, after a few weeks, skin irritation or redness. This is like a sunburn. It doesn't kick in until a couple weeks in. And similarly, it can take a few weeks for it to resolve after the completion of radiation therapy. So this is an expected side effect. It'll have the exact shape of the radiation field. So it tends to be a square, for example. The skin changes will improve over time. It can take a long time. If you are darker pigmented, you will notice more pigmentation in that area. So fair skin people get redness. People with darker skin, people of Mediterranean descent, uh, people who are black will have more darkening, and that can be upsetting to people if you don't know it's going to get better. 
We also see things like skin tags. Those will fall off or can be removed. The other side effect that's kind of a puzzle to us is fatigue. Why would you get fatigued if we're just giving energy to one area? The thought is that as the bloodstream circulates blood through that area, we're also radiating some of the blood cells that are associated with energy. Now you won't have low white cell counts like you might on chemotherapy, it's not to that extent, but we think that has something to do with the fatigue. And it's important you be prepared for the fatigue, expect it and plan for it. This is a good time to ask for help from other people. As I mentioned, most people can work, but if you have a 12 hour a day demanding job, this might be something you wanna think about working with your employer to get limited hours, flexible schedule. And if you don't have that, work with your healthcare team to see if you can get medical leave. Other side effects are pretty minimal. Over time, we can see late effects. For example, the breast can become smaller if it was radiated, and we can also see skin changes called telangiectasias. What this is is prominent blood vessels. So on the skin itself, it almost looks like something you might see on the face of somebody who's very fair skinned, where you see a dot and then little blood vessels coming out. Those will occur many years later and uh, they tend not to disappear. So it's important to be aware that that can happen. It's not a sign that anything bad has happened. I've covered a lot today. I've covered what radiation is, how it's given, the schedule, who gets it, the side effects. If you want to review this again, that's another option. We'll cover some of the more, some more details in other videos. If you like this, uh, click like and subscribe and let us know what questions you have or other things you'd like us to cover. I've enjoyed talking with you today and I hope it's been helpful.